The next artist I'm going to talk to you about uh, is another American painter. Her name is Susan McDowell, and her married name is Susan McDowell Aikens. Now, you probably know that name. Uh, this is a portrait of her painted by her husband, uh, the very, very famous American realistic painter Thomas Aikens. Susan was a pupil of Aikens when he taught at the Pennsylvania Academy of Art in Philadelphia. Now, you're going to hear probably over and over again about the Pennsylvania Academy of Art. Uh, it was an art school that allowed women in. And a number of women who became professional artists uh, first got their training at the Pennsylvania Academy of Art. Uh, Mary Cassatt, obviously Aikens, uh, Susan McDowell, uh, Cecilia Bow. So, um, and, and they would give awards and uh, you know, they would exhibit. So it really was uh, a place that someone could go, even if they were a woman, and get a uh, professional start. So uh, Aikens was her uh, teacher. One of the things I've noticed, I found two portraits of uh, Susan uh, Aikens on the web. And they're both by Thomas Aikens. And she looks so, I mean, these are much older. She's, this isn't when she first married him, obviously. It's much later in her life. But she looks so downtrodden. Uh, and here she looks so thin. I wondered if she was sick. Um, it's kind of depressing, actually. I <laughs> don't know anything about their marriage, uh, except what I'm going to tell you right now. Um, she married Thomas Aikens, very famous painter. Uh, and uh, before then, she was uh, starting a career. She was exhibiting. Um, as well here, she won an award. And after she got married, she no longer exhibited. Uh, in 1916, Thomas died, and uh, Susan resumed her painting. Uh, she did have, uh, you know, she did continue to, to paint and create, but she did not have any kind of uh, one-person show, no solo exhibit until long after her death, uh, over 30 years later. So recognition um, often takes a, a long time. And we'll, we'll know there's a number of women artists who are married to very famous male artists. Uh, later on, you'll see, for example, Lee Krasner. And her husband, Jackson Pollock, was just the cause celebre. And they seem to think that she was the lady who baked cookies or something. Um, you know, it was after his death that she was recognized as an artist. Uh, and in, you know, I guess you'd say in a meaningful way, I think yeah, people who knew them knew she was an artist. Um, so this is another pattern. We've seen people uh, like Lily Martin Spencer, whose husband is actually willing for her to be the breadwinner and supports her in this. And now we see the opposite, where uh, uh, Thomas Aiken's wife uh, basically becomes the helpmate and support to her very famous husband. Um, she goes back to painting after his death. So we're going to see some work both before uh, she gets married and some work you know, later in her life. Um, this is before they're married. Uh, and uh, this is a picture of her sisters. So it's just called Two Sisters. Uh, it shows her sister Mary and her sister Elizabeth McDowell. Uh, and this is interesting to me because I didn't know that Roanoke had a art museum. <laughs> but this is actually, you know, with about a five hour drive of Johnson City. Um, I haven't seen the painting, I'm sorry. So I'm going to show you two different uh, reproductions of it, and the color is a little bit different. So uh, we'll just have to go to Roanoke and see which one the color is closer to. Um, in 1879, um, Susan McDowell won a prize, the Mary Smith Prize for the Best Painting by a Woman, by a matriculating woman, uh, from the Pennsylvania Academy of Art in Philadelphia. I don't know whether this was the painting or not. Uh, my sources just said, gave the date. Uh, but this is from that date, and so it might have been this painting. And here we see it with a little bit uh, different color, a little more uh, blues in here. Uh, the portrait is a portrait of her sisters, uh, very intimate, just doing everyday activities, a kind of close-up. 
Uh, one sister is reading and has stopped reading and is kind of looking over at what her sister is doing, who seems to be threading a needle. She's, uh, the brushwork is very, very lively. Um, I found this on the web. It's from the John D. Rockefeller collection. So obviously, I haven't seen this. Um, but uh, it's from 1880, and it's just an anonymous woman. We don't know the sitter's name, a woman seated. Uh, with the kind of beautiful play of the color with the warm uh, sort of ochre backgrounds and the very delicate blues and whites in the, in the, the woman's garment. Um, kind of original how she's po 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 kind of original how she has posed her sitters. Um, we do know that uh, Susan McDowell exhibited at the Philadelphia Society of Artists in 1879, again in 1880. But 1884, she got married, uh, and she gave up her painting. Um, evidently, though, as she was still allowed to do photography, which uh, perhaps at that time they didn't realize or didn't think of as much as an art. Or maybe it just took less time, uh, so she could have had more time for domestic duties. I don't know. I didn't find out much about her photography, although there are some pictures on the web. Now, this is a portrait of her husband. Um, the date, as you can see, um, they don't know exactly, but they say 1920 to 25. Since Aikens died in 1916, uh, it is probably created from a photograph. And it's probably the fo a photograph that Susan McDowell Aikens uh, actually took. Uh, the pose, for example, is not something that you would have usually with a professional photographer, you know, which would be much more staid. This is very intimate, very realistic. Um, you know, very personal kind of picture. Uh, so her, her husband is, has been painting, he's kind of looking around the edge of the, um, the, the easel. Um, painting. So we're seeing American realism, uh, very free brushwork, uh, an informal, personal kind of composition. And the colors are close to being browns and grays, you know, pretty monochromatic, uh, which takes a, a, an amount of skill. Uh, to create a picture that's not totally dull and boring uh, when you're using uh, basically grays and browns, which was also a color scheme that her, her husband, as you saw, also used quite a bit of. Uh, this is a bit later. Um, the uh, picture on the right is by Susan Aikens. Uh, the picture on the left is by Thomas Aikens. Uh, and there's about 30 years apart. And you can see that her husband certainly does influence her heart art even after he has uh, been dead for some years. Uh, the picture on, by Thomas Aikens is of uh, a portrait of Henry O. Tanner, uh, who is probably the most famous uh, black painter of the 19th century. And as you see, he lives into the 20th century. He is a uh, rather uh, wonderful painter, actually. Um, and so, you know, he obviously would have perhaps known Thomas. They're both painters. Um, the pose uh, is uh, very similar to the pose that Susan Aikens uses later for uh, her portrait of Luigi Maratti. And he is another artist uh, whom they know. Um, he's a Philadelphia artist. He's a friend of the family. And once again, you have that kind of intimate close-up view Uh, Luigi seems to be even more introspective, almost like uh, he's, he's painted uh, perhaps without, uh, you know, it looks like we've just seen him, like he doesn't even know we're there. You know, his eyes are down, he's thinking. Um, so, you know, there's something uh, very personal um, about the painting. Um, we see, once again, the monochromatic colors, these browns, and just relieved by the white collar, uh, the touch of red in the tie, the cravat, and, you know, a little bit of warmth. It looks like there's a little uh, touch of red in his ears, too, you know, sort of uh, throughout the, the skin tones. Uh, the brushwork is extremely vigorous, and it looks like she's just, you know, sat down and just spontaneously created this. However, uh, she talks about it took her years to paint the painting. And uh, she's very, very careful with her technique, even though it looks very free and very vigorous. Um, I did find a reference to the fact that she also painted still lifes. And I did find this picture uh, on uh, a website. 
Um, it, there was no date associated with it. Some of the other pictures that are uh, still lifes that are listed, uh, the Smithsonian Institution has a list of American artists and uh, you know where they've where they are or where they were, and uh, so they seem to have repetition of some of them, uh, listing uh, as many as they know their works and where they are and uh, the dates if they are known, and uh, it doesn't. It usually doesn't have pictures attached to it, so it just says, you know, still life or something like this. Um, several of the still lifes were from the 20s, 1924 to 25, so that I don't know if this one was from the same time or not. Um, but it's a rather, you know, interesting uh, still life. Uh, once again, you've got that monochromatic background, colors, and the subtlety of the colors, and then the, the white uh, Japanese vase or the cream Japanese vase kind of stands out a bit. Uh, you've got a contrast of, of textures, uh, different elements of Japanese vase and uh, the beads are both these circular shapes. Uh, there's a variation of the colors. Um, you see this sort of uh, deeper red in the beads uh, with the kind of salmony uh, reddish color in the vase. Um, and so you, you have things going from the pastels to the very intense colors. Um, so once again, sort of a uh, you know, a rather wonderful still life and shows her skill.